touch of the Lord that we feel this morning. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. I want you to turn around, greet two or three brothers and say you did the right thing by being at men's conference. Amen. Amen. It's good to see all the men uh, that are here. I understand there are those that have to get back to their churches and places of responsibility. You may be seated for a moment. We'll, we'll stand here in a moment. But... Um, I know there are those that have to get back to their areas of responsibility, and um, but I am so grateful for what the Lord has done uh, in our midst, in the men of Texas, and what we felt last night and Thursday night. I want to tell you, those are the kind of moments that transform us for the rest of our lives. How many are glad you came to men's conference? I've been, I've been blessed. I, I want to give honor to Brother uh, Enzi. And the, he's laid the groundwork for uh, some of the things that we've experienced the last years he served. And uh, also uh, to the future leadership, present and future, Brother Shemansky and uh, Brother Burks and that whole leadership team, all the men that are responsible, you are in great capable hands as you move forward. I, I believe that you could double in attendance next year. I said I believe you could double in attendance next year. It wouldn't be impossible for God to do that if you just take what you've received and take it home with you, share it in your local church, be a blessing to your local pastor and encourage the men Go home and talk about it and celebrate it. And instead of talking about nothing wrong, talking about guns and trucks and four-wheel drive and killing, kilt, kill, killing, kilt, all the stuff you've killed and killed. And that's good. That's good. Talk about that. But then also talk about the things you've got dominion over at men's conference. Man. And um, I, I think it'll be a blessing. And to all the hospitality. The food, the basket, uh, the fried catfish. I said, yes, Lord, you have blessed my soul. You can't get that kind of food in California, and I appreciate that. And I want to give special recognition to the music, to the boys, Dylan and Colin and Ethan and this whole team. They've done an outstanding job. Would you give them a hand clap? They've done a great job. want to make one more point of clarification I confess to you about my me kissing my future wife on the cheek but don't go and be kissing women just you got to understand I was a sinner so you young men don't be going oh you know brother Johnson kissed his wife at the campground I'm going to find me one and kiss don't do that just trying to repent before you men. Um, I'm going to try to just take a moment of your time. I, won't, I don't intend to be long. It is 745. And, um, and so it take, might take me a little while to get going. Um, but something the Lord gave me many years ago, and I, I, want it, I want it to be a blessing to you before you go home today. If you'll stand and go in the word of the Lord to Proverbs 7, familiar text um, today. 
Proverbs 7. We'll pick up the reading of the word of the Lord at verse 6. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement, and behold, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. He went away to her house in the twilight and the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot, subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now she is without in the streets and lies at wait at every corner. She caught him and she kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. I have paid my vows, therefore came I forth to meet you diligently to seek thy face and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and carved works of fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love for the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goes after her straightway, as an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteneth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me, now, therefore, O oh, you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her paths. Go not astray to her path. For she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many, everybody say strong men, have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. And let everybody say amen. You may be seated. This is not a new story. The unnamed woman has been the subject of controversy from the beginning of ages. She is... One of man's greatest adversaries. Her name is unstated, but the wise among us can easily recognize her, for they too have been in her crosshairs and the object of her desires. She lives in Dallas, in Houston, in Chicago, and Miami. As a matter of fact, she has a timeshare in every city. And she has a house on every corner. She lives in your neighborhood. She watches you as you take your kids to school and possibly your wife to work. She is much closer than you realize. She catches you occasionally watching you ever closely out of the corner of her eye and she thinks just... A little closer. She is the perfect opportunist. She is methodical. She is patient. She is a cold and calculated killer. She is without remorse and she is without question man's most dreaded assassin. She is indiscriminate when she travels. It, it doesn't really matter whether it be car or plane or train and occasionally she walks and when she does men stop and stare and wonder and amazement. She can be found working, blending ever so carefully in post offices and banks and convenience stores and dry cleaners just simply 
waiting. It's just her presence is so intoxicating. Her aroma, the smell of aloe and fresh cinnamon, strong men, much stronger than you and I have become her victims. And today they lie broken in the fields of regret. Failure is one thing, but regret is entirely a different thing. The cold, dark hallways of regret are the things that drive most men mad. It, it's no wonder that men today that have been infected by her or chained to the end of a bottle or an addiction. They are tormented by unborn dreams and possibilities. If there was only some way to be immune from her. But she's just so indescribable. Rationale and control and reason, they all buckle under her spell with hair as black as a thousand midnights, those steel blue eyes with allurement of compassion and understanding. Her skin is perfectly tanned in the heat of a noonday sun and her voice, oh, let me tell you about her voice. Her diction is impeccable. Her lips speak words that cause the sure-footed to wobble and stumble. Her doctrine is a doctrine of fair speech and justification and indulgence. She whispers to you, you deserve to be happy. She boldly states, if I was your lover, things would be different. She strokes the king of us all. She is very comfortable in ego land. That part of us that is intrinsic in every man in this building. Ego, the part that even God struggles to manage at time. He knew better. He had been warned. The wise had told him to avoid that corner. Every, everybody knows that the street is connected to the corner and the corner is connected to the house. And of course, the house is connected to the bedroom. But those coverings of tapestry, the carved works, the fine linen of Egypt, the 800 thread count sheets, the five-star hotel, the craving to taste the forbidden is just too great. The alarms are sounding. The sirens are wailing. The emergency broadcast system in his spirit, in his consciousness, is telling him, this is not a test. The crossbars are coming down. But he says to himself, I can beat that train. In a flashing moment, the scripture says that she caught him. I think it is indicative of the text to consider if she caught him, how many times did she miss him? How many times did she set the trap and the, and the young man never took the bait? How many times did he get close but not close enough? How many times did he look but not look long enough? But this time was different. Her strategy had changed. Her tactics were more intense. Her passion was more determined. And she fumbled through the keys looking for the one key that will unlock the gateway to his desires. You see, she is a fierce oppon opponent attacking, attacking from every angle. Looking for the hairline crack that's in the armor. Maybe a wound. Maybe a seed of bitterness. Maybe isolation. And this time, when he had looked toward her house, as he had oftentimes in past, and fantasized about what it would be like with just one touch, 
it was already too late. You see, the day was fading and the dark of night was approaching and the sun was setting and his judgment was cloudy. It was too late. The Bible says now in the street she responds. She laughs and she chuckles. Funny. What a coincidence we keep bumping into each other like this as she brushes brushes up against him. She withstood his feeble objection. She said, I have peace offerings with me. This day I have paid my vows, she protests. I may worship her too. I love God. I go to church. God is love. God will surely understand. The writer in Proverbs said, can a man take fire? Into his bosom and his clothes not be burned. He is standing at the edge of the abyss. The point of no return. He had been there before only in his mind. So this time it was much easier. With much justifying and enticing arguments. The Bible said she persuades him. And he yields To the smoothness of her lips. And she murders his conscience. She wipes her mouth with his consecrations. And over the edge he follows her straightway like an... Like an ox that goes to the slaughterhouse. The temporary euphoria of the free fall comes to a certain end. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. And the final admonition... Of the writer is sober and a warning to all who listen and read. She has cast down many. Many strong men have been slain by her. In the unfolding drama of the text, we as readers can see the cast that is Played out on stage, the author and the narrator was Solomon. He gives us insight, an eyewitness account to the story as he saw it from the window of his house. Some commentary suggests from the language of the text that he had encountered the woman personally. We have another character on stage. It is the young man that is void of understanding. He is impetuous without discretion. He is absent of sound judgment. He is refusing to do business by daylight and he moves in the twilight of the evening. His corruption had triumphed over his conviction. And finally, the seasoned hunter, the seducer of men's souls who is a thousand years old but her spirit is alive and well in 2018. But the individual that I want to introduce to you this morning is silent and missing. Tucked into the seams of the scripture is what I felt impressed by God to preach to you about for a little while this morning. This 364 word story hinges on just 13 words. The destiny of what transpired hung on just 13 little words. It says, for the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. And I want to preach to the men of Texas district that the good men need to be at home. This is not a story about adultery. This is a story about absence. Uh, Because if the good man would have been at home, uh, he could have protected uh, the things that God had given him and entrusted him with. And so I preach uh, to the final setting in the final minutes uh, of this men's conference uh, that every good man should be home and take care of the things that God has entrusted us with. I pose to you the question, where 
is the good man. And why has he been gone so long? The psalmist understood this in Psalms tw- chapter 12 and verse 1. He said, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. He said, help, Lord, for the godly man is no more. The godly man had become an endangered species. The godly man had been annihilated by an epidemic. The godly man had been hunted into extinction. The godly man had been scattered to the four corners of the earth. The godly man had been executed by online pornography. The godly man was being an endangered species. You can go to the internet. You can type in endangered species. You'll see things that say, save the rhino, save the pandas, save the whales. I say, save Save the godly man. We can't go home uh, and be the same kind of man. Uh, you're an endangered species. And uh, I say, help, Lord, save uh, the godly men uh, of Texas. Would you clap your hands to the Lord uh, and give God a shout of praise? Help us, God. Save the godly man. The number one reason that a species becomes its extinct is called habitat destruction. The dwelling place, the residence, the home that they abide in, it it simply dis- disappears. I tell you, on this Saturday morning, if there had been a man in the house in Proverbs chapter 7, the story would have been quite different. If there had been a man present, I'm not talking about a limp wristed, I'm not talking about a sway back. I'm talking about some sissy, prima donna. Can I please speak to the man of the house? Can I speak to a man that is in this building? You don't send your wife to the front door to fight spiritual battles. We need a man that'll stand guard, that'll stand in his place, that'll go to the front door. I say, good man, go home and protect the thing that God has entrusted you with. On his way to a morning commute, on his way to another business trip, on his way to another boy's night out, He left the house unlocked. He left the gate unsecured. He left his family unprotected. He left the alarm system turned off. I say to you men, warning, warning, warning. You've been gone too long. The Bible says in Matthew, while... Men slept. The enemy came. I say, wake up. I say, wake up. I say, wake up. Somebody shout, wake up. I say, wake up, men of Texas. The enemy is at your street. I say, wake up, men of Texas. The enemy is at your corner. I say, wake up, men of Texas. The enemy is at your house. I preach to the good man. Go home and be the man. Go home and be the husband. Go home and be the... Don't just go hunting and go fishing. That's all right. But go home and be the kind of man you need to be. Good man, go home and protect the gift that God has given you. Somebody shout unto God. 
I need to go home. Good man. Go home. She's after your doctrine. She's after your destiny. She's after your deliverance. If there ever was a time for change, it's right now. If there ever was a time for courage, it's right now. If there ever was a time for great commitment, it is right now. The Bible says this truth. He hath taken a bag of money with him and he will come home at the day appointed. She was saying he never comes home sooner. Then he says he will, maybe later, but never sooner. Can I tell you, the enemy knows your schedule better than you do. Our business is not in a chat room. Our business is not in a club. Our business is not with our homeboys, our homegirls, our, our dogs, our, port, our, our partners, our number one business. I, I don't know about you, but my number one business is to take care of my family. My number one business is to take care of my kids. My number one business is to go home and protect the thing that God has given me. I Say, good man, go home. You know what I told the Lord? When I first came to God, I was telling a young man this in the altar last night. I said, God, I used to sit in services on Father's Day. Mother's Day by myself. And I'd be less than honest to tell you that I wasn't a little envious. I'd see dads and with their sons. I'd see godly families together. And I'd sit there by myself. But you know what I told God? I said, God, there ain't a lot I want. I don't want fame. I don't want fortune. I don't want to pastor a big church. I, 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 I'm not looking for the limelight. I'm not looking. I'd, I was having this conversation with Joshua last night. I'm not looking for limelight. I'm not looking to be on a big stage. But I can tell you, God, what I want. I promise you. I promise you. If you ever give me the opportunity to be a good man. If you ever give me the opportunity to have a family and to have sons or to have daughters, I promise you, I'm, I may not be perfect and I'm not perfect, but I can tell you this, uh, I'm going to protect uh, Megan and Michaela with every ounce of strength uh, that is inside of me. I'm not going to let some demon, some doctrine, uh, some spirit, oh no, we got to have good men uh, that go home uh, and at all costs. Uh, Protect the greatest investment that God has ever given you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, good man, go home. I won't be much longer. You need to go home from this meeting. You need to anoint your house. You need to put the blood on the doorpost. You need to look at every spirit that has caused a vision in your children. They may not be serving God. I don't care. You need to go to their bedroom whether they know it or not. You need to anoint their pillows. You need to anoint the doorpost. It may be a, it may be a, a wife. You may be having marital troubles. But you need to stand in the doorpost. You need to stand there. The Bible says this in Matthew 24 and 43. But know this. That if the good man of the house had known 
In what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. I'm going to tell you, a good man will be standing guard. A good man will be watching over his family. A good man will take what he received at men's conference and go home and be a better man, a better husband, a better father. I say, good man, go home. Good man, go home and be from this meeting what God has called you to be. When I was a teenager, I was robbed, brutally robbed. I can remember... As clear as a bell. I was laying in my bed sleeping in North Carolina. And somebody came to the door and they knocked. And in those days, some of y'all remember they had the chain. A little bit of a chain just right there. And that's how they locked the doors in those days. There There was no deadbolts. I was staying there in my grandmother's house. And and they she cracked the door. I, I remember her like it was yesterday. I still have to fight the urge at night sometimes I have to push back the darkness because I I have to make sure everything's locked and everything's secured and everything is protected around the home that the alarm is set in in large part because what happened on that night and I I can remember the screaming in the house and then uh, the running and the shuffling and and in North Carolina it ain't like California I just I stepped around the door in the closet and there was a a 22 rifle and I, I reached into the rifle uh, into the closet I grabbed the rifle and I saw a man coming this way I pulled the, the gun up to my shoulder and I pulled the trigger I pointed it right to his head I pulled the trigger and, and the gun was not loaded I was as I said I was just a teenager then and he grabbed me he threw me in the closet he said if you move I'll blow, I'll blow your brains out I'll, I'll kill you right here now They took, they plundered the house. They flipped the mattresses upside down. They drugged me into the living room. They they took duct tape and they put it around my wrist and around my feet. They put it across my lips. I I didn't know if I was going to live or I was going to die. It was it was unbelievable. They says if there was five men that rushed through the house and literally decimated the house and I was laying there and and I I didn't know what to do I I felt so violated and after finally they left and we were able to call the police department and they came out and did an investigation and I asked my grandmother I said why did what happened what happened what she said when I when I cracked the door and I looked to the door I I couldn't see clearly It, it was nighttime but they said the first question they asked they said is there a man in the house is there is there somebody there because if there would have been a man in the house the thief could not have come in and broke in and destroyed I tell you good man get back home and protect Oh, I wish I had some men. I know you may be a little tired, but you ought to lift your voice and say, God, help me to be a good man and help me to go home. Lift your hands all across this building right now. Good man. Go home. Good man. Go home. I read an article recently about the Great Wall of China. 4,000 miles long. One of the greatest wonders of the world. 2,700 years old. The only object that can be seen from outer space. 
China built that. Generations lived and died building the Great Wall of China. It's a marvel to behold. You, you, should, you should try to just look it up on the internet how far it goes. You can see it from the space shuttle. One generation would die. That wall was so important. That wall protected them from invading empires. That wall protected their children. It protected their families. How would you get through a wall like that? Because history records that China was overran countless times. Many armies devastated their lands, destroyed crops, raped women and children. The sad fact of the matter is this. It wasn't an army that beat down the wall. It wasn't somebody that climbed over the wall. It was too long. It was too fortified. It was too strong. But the sad fact of the matter was somebody bribed the gatekeeper. Somebody convince the gatekeeper that what you do is really not that important I'm going to tell you we need you your pastor needs you the district of Texas we need you to be a good man and go home Lord was dealing with me about this I'm I'm finished I said Lord when the Lord originally spoke to me about this I said I want I want to be a blessing I I, I, I want to be that man I want to help men I want something to be imparted into them I I don't want to just preach a sermon I, I, don't, I, I want something God some way, God, to do something. And the Lord quickened me. He said, you need to get a master key. You need to get a master key. And you need to give it out everywhere you go. So they can put it on their key ring and understand as the man of the house. It's a visual reminder that they hold the master key of protecting their home and protecting their family and protecting their children and protecting their pastor. And so I started looking for keys and my secretary started looking for keys and I wanted every man to have a key. Something that they could look at, that they could have in their hands, that they could feel. And my secretary secretary started looking, and there were all kinds of keys out there. And I, I said, Shannon, I don't want just any key. I said, I, I want a key that says, do not duplicate. She said, Pastor, those keys, cost so much more money and it was like the spirit of the Lord said to me the things that can't be duplicated will always cost you more I speak to every man you're not meant to be duplicated nobody is meant to take your place No other man, no other system, no other design, no other organization. No, 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 no. God has tailor made you. God has allowed you to be in this meeting for this setting so that you can go back home and say,
say, baby, I'm different. Uh, You could go to the kids and say, daddy's not going to be like he used to be. Uh, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be present. Uh, I'm going to be prayerful. I'm going to be engaged. Uh, I'm going to be the man uh, that maybe I never saw exampled in front of me. I say in the final moments of this men's conference good men of Texas go home would you lift your hands all across this building would you lift your voice all across this building come on one more time one more time would you cry out to God I'm going to be different I'm going to take what I've received I'm going to take what's been imparted I'm going to take, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be different. I'm not, I will not be the same. I will not live another year. I will not keep up the same habits. I will be different. I will go home. I will support my pastor. I will love my wife. I will be committed. I will be faithful. I will not quit. I say, good man. Go home. Come on, lift your hands all across this building right now. Come on, every man. I want you to slip down to this altar. I want you to lift your voice right now. Come on, one more time. One more time before you get back in your car, before you go back to your city, before you go back to your home, before you go back to your marriage. Come on, let's go a little bit deeper. Come on, let's go a little bit deeper. I want you to think about your family. I want you to think about your responsibility. If the good man would have been home, this story would have been different. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Tear down the walls, let everything fall. 